What's up my friends, I'm Harv, I'm a videographer and on this channel I make videos about audio and videography. In this video I'm checking out this, the Warm Audio WA84 small diaphragm condenser mic. At such a mind-blowing price, can this actually be good? How does it sound? How is it built? All of this? To come. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bit you want. And this channel now has a Patreon where it's non profit, the idea being that any funds from Patreon, I buy gear, do an unbiased review, and then I give the gear away to my backers. So if you find these videos helpful and you want to be in for winning some gear, definitely check it out. It's down below. It's just the cost of a cup of coffee to be a backer. So anyway, I know what you're thinking. Harv, will you shut up and get on with it? Well, yes. What is this? The Warm Audio WA84 is a recreation of kind of one of the studio classic mics, the Neumann KM184, and Warm Audio have been killing it recently. This is just one of many recreations of classic microphones that, you know, if you were to buy the originals, would cost you thousands, if not, in some cases, tens of thousands. And, th and they're really good. Just a quick note, this is predominantly a videography channel, but this video is obviously gonna get some traffic from audio guys. And you know what? Video guys, listen up. I know that Rode are kind of the major player in the kind of on-camera mic category in the market, but honestly, studio, studio engineers know what they're doing, and this really is a mic that is worth considering for all of you guys. Anyway, onto features, and this has a small diaphragm capsule, which is a recreation based on the Neumann version. Unlike the Neumann, however, it boasts a nice Cinemag transformer, which many people attribute a certain fatness to. It also has a Fairchild FET and Weimar capacitors. Now, I'm not sure what kind of difference the latter of those two would make, but in my book, Fairchild anything equals good. If you're not sure what I'm talking about here, just Google Fairchild and you'll see. Also, if you know, if please comment what kind of difference these two things would make to the sound down there. The only on mic control is a minus 10 dB pad for if you're recording anything loud. All of this coupled with gold plated XLR connectors makes for impressive sounding specs. I've actually been using this for the voiceovers for these videos, and I can already hear some of you typing, that's not what a small diaphragm condenser's for, Harv. And I don't care, because I love the way this sounds. And yes, I own a Shaw SM7B, honestly, not my favorite. Amongst other mics, you know, like I've got the AKG C414, which I'm using just up here, and I prefer this. So right now you're hearing this, the AKG C414 XLS, which has been my go-to mic for, uh, God, nearly, maybe 10 years now, because it just does everything really pretty well. Um, Distance-wise, I'm about, I don't know, eight inches away, something like that. It's closer than it looks on, on camera. And um, I love how, I love the th kind of thickness of it, but it also has quite nice top end. However, now let's switch over to the WA84 and see how it compares. And here it is, the WA84 from Warm Audio. You know, I realize that this is not considered a kind of a vocal uh, microphone. Uh, small diaphragm condensers aren't generally, but I really like them. I think they're very articulate. This one in particular, as it has a, a nice, uh, I, I believe it's a Cinemag transformer, it has this sort of extra thickness that I haven't heard from the original Neumann version of this mic. So, so what do you think? I've got it going through the same channel strip, which is the Heritage Audio Brit strip, and I've got it the same distance away from me. Um, maybe there might be a kind of a level difference, but I will do my best to kind of balance those. Um, what do you think? In in my ears, it's sounding uh, more articulate, but w with a kind of a smoother top end. I find the AKG in comparison actually a, a, a touch, I, I don't say the word trashy on the top end, but this just has, I don't know, more polish or something. I don't know if you're hearing that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good microphone for dialogue. I like it. 
You may be thinking that it sounds a little lean on the low end, and honestly that hasn't been my experience at all, and I think that's down to that beefy Cinemag transformer, because it really does have this sort of lush sounding low end. You'd also be forgiven for thinking that it might have a brittle top end, and again that hasn't been my experience at all with this mic. Airy, articulate, yeah, definitely, but it has this kind of silky polished feel to it. It's really nice. Anyway, I've got sound clips coming up so you can hear for yourself. But next, build quality. My first impression of when the WA84 arrived was a positive one. It comes in a plastic case, which I don't love. And obviously you get the mic, a shock mount, a foam windshield and a mic clip, both of the latter I won't ever use. I don't care for the case, personally, I just find it a bit unnecessary. The mic itself, I I actually do quite like the build quality, it comes in this kind of brushed nickel kind of colour, but you can also get it in black. I also really like the shock mount, it works perfectly and seems well made. So I'm pleased with the build quality overall, especially considering the price, however, when talking to a few of my recording studio buddies, they kind of suggested that Warm Audio were making products that were kind of not built to last. Now I can't really comment on that, but I, I suspect this hinges on how well you look after your gear, where you're using it, if it's a commercial studio or at home, and also how you use it, like how, how <laughs> what if you're gonna use it on snare drums and that kind of thing, yeah, yeah you might have some issues. But I'd say for home studio use, I've got no problem recommending it. Next on to user experience, and what is there possibly to talk about? It's a mic, right? You stick it in front of something and then hit record. But what I care about is how easy it is to get a good sound when positioning the mic, and then once you've recorded it, you know, whether it needs much post-processing, you know, with EQ and compression and that kind of thing. Firstly, positioning on acoustic guitar, and I found it extremely easy to get a sound that I really loved. Uh, and honestly, this is compared to my four times more expensive AKG C414, again, I'm using it up here, which that mic, it sounds good, but I find it a lot more kind of finicky with finding a good position on acoustic guitar. Anyway, Enough talk, let me show you what it sounds like. I then wanted to try out a couple of off-axis positions to see how they sounded. And again, I was really pretty blown away with how good they sounded with almost all positions. I also found that to my taste, there was very little work that I needed to do in post to getting you know, the best sound out of this mic. If you think about the things that you target when, when EQing, I break it up into a few you know, kind of categories. Firstly, the top end, you just wanna make sure there's the right amount of top end. And then the low end, I just wanted to make sure that things are you know, kind of tight and controlled. And then the last thing I would do is just do some surgical tweaks to the mid range. The WA84 sounds very complete to me, sort of finished straight out of the box. But let me show you now some before and after of, you know, some EQ tweaks. <laughs>
It sounds so good. I will say though, my preference is actually to use the EQ section on my Heritage Audio Brit Strip, which is a kind of a, a Neve clone of, you know, one of their channel strips. And using that with just a little bit of tweaking of the EQ section, I, I honestly don't do anything in post when it comes to EQ or compression for that matter. Next onto value for money, and I find it pretty difficult to fault the WA84. You know, I paid 250 pounds for it. I'll put the conversion of some other currencies here right now. You know, and when you consider that if you were to buy the original Neumann, you know, you can buy almost three of the warm audio for the price of one Neumann version. So it's worth noting that the value you get comes from these being assembled in China and warm audio are clearly buying, you know, they're bulk buying parts and they're mass producing enough to, you know, to bring down the overall cost. Personally, I don't care about this, but you know, you might. And honestly, I'm sure their QC and tolerances are really tight. So, you know, that's that. For the video guys, compared to Rode, remember what I said about Rode earlier? Well, you know, it's worth saying this microphone is not an on-camera microphone. It's simply too sensitive for that. But you know, if you're someone who uses off-camera audio, and you should, that, that is the quickest, easiest way to improve your audio, I really think that this microphone is worth a look. It's as near as makes no difference the same price as the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, and the video mic NTG, and the warm audio is certainly the superior mic in terms of sound quality. Next, onto the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Firstly, the pros and the value cannot be beaten for what this mic offers. It's value-tastic. It has really high-end components, a quality capsule, a Cinemag transformer, Fairchild FET, and Weimar capacitors. What's not to like about that? I love that gorgeous, silky-sounding top end. It's stunning. It has a surprisingly fat sounding bass response whilst remaining punchy and controlled. Good build quality? I'm not gonna say great because I've learned to trust my recording studio buddy's advice, but you know, so far so good. It's super easy to get a pleasing sound when positioning this mic. That's good, that saves time. And for me, there was really not much work needed in post to achieve the sound I was looking for. And onto the cons, and I'm not a fan of the plastic case, but you know, big deal, right? At this price, you have to wonder about its longevity, but only time will tell. Finally, to my opinion, and the WA84 from Warm Audio is so good. I mean, I've owned so many mics over the years. The closest comparison I can think of is the, I had the SE Electronics RN17, which is designed in collaboration with Rupert Neve, so some serious <laughs> design oomph there. And that, those mics actually had uh, a, a huge kind of bulge at the end where they had a, a gigantic transformer. And I still think I prefer this warm audio over that. Otherwise, I think my pros and cons nicely summed up how I feel about this mic. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I really struggled with the cons on this video. I like to, to have a, um, a kind of, I like balance reviews. With this one, it was, it was difficult. So buy this mic if, you, if you're in the market for a Neumann KM184, you know, at the very least, just give it, give it an audition. You never know, you might even prefer it. Don't buy this mic if budget isn't a consideration for you and you care about having a fancy logo on your microphone. Anyway, that's it for this video. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. My question of the day is simple. What's your favorite microphone? And how do you feel about this kind of product being made in China? I'll see you in the comments section. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about audio and videography on this channel, of which the algorithm has picked this video for you to watch next, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video.